to crack up a few years later. Their first flight at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina in December 1903 is a milestone in man's quest of new horizons, an historic event that electrified the world. Another trailblazer was Glenn Curtis, who flew at the unheard of speed of 47 miles an hour back in 1909. Harriet Quimby brought fresh fame to America by flying across the English Channel. Isn't that flying through the honey? When war broke out in 1914, the airplane was a curio, and the pilot considered a reckless hero. But aviation grew up during the war. Here was something new and dramatic, a new horizon that changed man's concept of battle. America salutes its heroes of the first war in the air. Eddie Rickenbacker, our ace of aces, is shown in these rare pictures taken in France of the Hat in the Ring Squadron. Heroes like Eddie Rickenbacker flew their frail machines into flaming skies. From the infant of the Wright brothers, aviation grew into a destructive giant that altered the ways of war. First air mail, aviation begins to prove its worth as our war president, Woodrow Wilson, officiates at the first air mail flight from Washington to New York. An event that foreshadowed our great mail and passenger service of today. The battleship Alabama was the target of aerial bombs in the first test of air power versus sea power 20 years ago. The controversy started by these tests has raged ever since. Air power against sea power. Even 20 years ago, American planes could have sunk any dreadnought afloat. Number one. America's naval air arm is the finest organization of its kind in the world. Its long-range bombers, its fighters and dive bombers are ever ready to drive away those who would dare invade our shores. We have seven carriers and eleven more on the way. For years after the Wright brothers, inventors have tried new angles to this flying game. Accepted methods were not for them, and the result? Well, this one luckily didn't have far to fall. This little number made its debut in 1934. Yes, there were many who laughed. But the darn thing flew. What seems like a strange idea today may turn out to be the aeronautical wonder of tomorrow. To counter the terrific torque created by one propeller, this inventor devised two in one. And it worked. The trip to Mars by rocket plane. Looks like heaven can wait. This is the flyaway rocket bike. Well, it's a bike anyway. 
and it looks like anything can happen. Look out, it's going up! We've seen hot foot, but this is the first hot seat. Next, the umbrella plane. You might think it's good only in case of rain, but no sir. April showers have a silver lining and this invention works. The umbrella of the skyway. When a fella gets an idea, well, you know how it is. Every time somebody laughs, he believes in it all the more. There's only one way. Just give him a helping hand. In this so-called gyroplane, Dr. Valentine Neubauer ventured forth in search of the stratosphere. If clothes make the stratosphere pilot, he's a safe. Okay, wind her up. Would this be a shakedown flight? Come on, brother, more steam. We know just how you feel. Tried and true is the autogyro. It has long been accepted in the ranks of aviation. It plays a big role in man's dreams for the future. Igor Sigorsky, noted designer, built his first helicopter in Russia years ago. His 1941 model is one of the aeronautical wonders of our time. Another milestone in man's struggle for mastery of the air. From the youth of today will come the skilled airmen and designers of tomorrow. Youth with wings, whose inventions in miniature already have pointed the way for their elders. The novel designs that appear at model plane week are now watched by government experts as never before. Gas-powered and glider models, skillfully built and skillfully flown. Uncle Sam's youngsters are the vital reservoir of knowledge and skill for the years to come. Their dreams are as big as some of the models they build. The entire world was electrified by the daring exploits of Lindbergh, Bird, and others. The lone eagle thrilled all mankind. He flew alone, 3,600 miles, New York to Paris. Clarence Chamberlain, in the Belanca, he later flew across the Atlantic. Saved the lives of the four passengers in a crash landing. One wheel was broken. A terrible tragedy is averted by another great American. No story of aviation would be complete without a salute to those daredevils, the stuntmen. They gamble with death high in the sky. Wiley Post of round the world fame and beloved Will Rogers. Their tragic Alaskan flight ended two famous careers. Amina Earhart will live in the hearts of Americans. Her Atlantic flight was followed by other exploits with a tragic end in the Pacific. Ruth Elder took her place in Aviation's Hall of Fame along with Ruth Nichols, speed and altitude record holder. They blazed a trail for sister Americans. Tragedy has dogged the progress of aviation. Men like Lowell Bales gave their lives in man's quest for speed and more speed. Death lurks in the sky trails and strikes without warning. The Monteverdi brothers sought fame for themselves and for their native land as they took off from Floyd Bennett Field for Portugal. The plane is overloaded. Both 
hurt, but they live. Constantino Blackos was sure his rocket-type brainstorm would fly. Cool heads and quick hands save his life. He never even lost his hat. The airship Akron in a dramatic tragedy. A sudden gust of wind and up she goes, carrying two ground crewmen to a terrible death. Pinedo's tragic attempt to fly from New York to Europe. His ship is heavily overloaded. The Hindenburg, on its last Atlantic crossing, who will forget the stark drama of the next few seconds? trapped in the flaming wreckage. Many killed as they jump in vain, but others miraculously dash to safety. Never has man seen such a sight. Never will that sight be forgotten. in Europe. What we desire to do is keep out of it. This becomes increasingly difficult from year to year as the interdependability of nations becomes greater. The only way that we can keep out of it is by maintaining an adequate national defense in this country. No matter how many treaties, scraps of paper, or agreements we have, unless we are backed up by adequate force, it will be impossible for us to maintain peace. Today, the war is very different than the last European war was. Now air power is the dominant feature of military operations. Air power can fly directly to the vital centers of an opposing state and neutralize it. It can destroy the city, it can wreck the aqueduct, it can knock out the lines of communication, it can destroy the food supply and make the people helpless to resist. <laughs> The world again in flames. Europe, Africa, Asia, and now Japan's treachery in the Pacific. Today a terrible new weapon. The modern bomber, writing a new technique of death over a terror-stricken world. Now America has been forced into the maelstrom of war. Never in all civilized history has such infamy and treachery been unleashed on a people at peace. But this nation will fight back, will keep fighting, until the perpetrator of that treachery has forever been silent. <laughs> Dunkirk, France on her knees, and Britain's heroic evacuation. For here, Britain's Royal Air Force fought the vaunted Luftwaffe to a standstill. The Battle of the Atlantic, and now the Pacific. General Mitchell's words were so true. The growing might of the democracies will triumph in the end. A Nazi blasted from the skies. Coventry, a symbol of destruction, but a symbol, too, of democracy's will to win. In the hands of aggressors, armies from the skies become a modern terror. In less than 40 years, aviation has become a modern Frankenstein that threatens to destroy man, its creator. The answer.
answer is clear. Frightfulness from the skies can be prevented only by overwhelming superiority in the air. should like to see this nation geared up to the ability to turn out at least 50,000 planes a year. America answers the clarion call from its president. Today it's war. We Americans, united as never in our history, work for victory. In our research centers, we are keeping abreast of every new development in aviation. And behind the battle of aircraft production are great men and great American industries. America has gone all out to build an air fleet second to none. Today as never before, that job is vital for the preservation of our way of life. Today, in war, American aviation is playing a dominant role in our determined fight for victory. Our new bombers and fighters are the best in the world. They're in the thick of the fight now. A mighty army with wings to carry on where General Pershing left off. Countless thousands of pilots a year is our goal. Warriors of the skies to avenge the treacherous assault on American lives and property. Cannon on wings. The Aero Cobra can stop enemy bombers. The best ship of its kind in the world today. Curtis P-40. One of our best pursuit planes. The Martin B-26, the fightingest, toughest bomber ever turned out. With other first-line planes, it's now in action against our double-crossing enemy in the Pacific. America, where aviation was born, has nothing to fear. We can outbuild and outfight Japan and any other power on Earth. We'll be turning out warplanes at the rate of 50,000 a year, well ahead of schedule. We didn't start this war, but we can finish it. <laughs> Uncle Sam's flying battleships have a job to do, and they're doing it. And our multi-gun fighters like the Aracuda will make our enemies, Japan, Germany, and Italy, choke on their infamous words and treacherous acts. America's plan is to turn out 1,000 four-engine bombers a month to carry our message of defiance to the warmongers of Europe and the Orient. Our parachute battalions are ready to fight to preserve our way of life. With aviation, we will be victorious. Our priceless heritage of freedom will keep us steadfast. Remember Pearl Harbor as we work and fight for a glorious victory. We have the will to win. We have the men, the tools to build the planes, the planes that will be our safeguard of freedom, our bulwark against aggression. They spell victory for America. Keep them flying.